Morning, everybody, and uh, welcome back. Thanks for joining me around my little uh, junk wood fire here. So I've, I've tried to make this video several times, and it seems like every time I do, something keeps changing. So we'll give it another go and see what I can come up with this time. <clears throat> the, what was it, a couple weeks ago? Nope, no, I'm going to rewind a little further. For those of y'all that don't know, um, just about a couple of years ago, I signed up for the National Guard. Uh, what was it, May of 2021? Sounds about right. Anyway, shortly after that, the Commander in Chief came out with the COVID 19 vaccine mandate. Um, of course, he, he mandated not just for the military, he tried to mandate it for a uh, whole bunch of people, uh, you know, military contractors, for uh, just regular old civilians, tried to do it through OSHA. Uh, he got told that was illegal and he couldn't do that. Military va uh, vaccine mandate stuck around a little while longer and that was the one that he, you look at it objectively, he it was closest to, to having a leg to stand on. Because uh, he is commander in chief of the military. So, okay. But at the same time, that didn't sit well with me for a number of reasons, which, if you want, you know, leave a comment below and, and tell me that you'd like me to go into that. And I can, can talk more about that. But um, anyway, I, I submitted a request for a religious exemption, which uh, you're, of course, allowed to do. And. Went, shipped off to uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. Was told by the the, uh, the RSP folks here in Maine that I would it would, wouldn't be a problem. I'd be allowed to to roll on through, and that uh, ex exemption request would process while I was in training or while I got to my unit. And just don't worry about it. Just go. Just ship, which I did. And. I get to Fort Sill and they tell me, well, <laughs> hey buddy, that's not how this is going to work. Uh, now I have heard that had I shipped to basically any of the other three bases that the Army uses for training, that this would not have been my experience. So um, if you had a different experience, that, that may be why. Um, for whatever reason, Fort Sill, the commander there interpreted that order as meaning he couldn't accept anyone through training that had not had the COVID-19 vaccine, or, or maybe he he just wanted to do that and you know and decided that that was how he would interpret it. I, I don't know. I, you know that's looking into people's internal thoughts and motivations, which I, I don't have that ability. But regardless, that was the call he made, and the uh, the result was there were a whole bunch of us that got stuck there in receiving for a couple weeks and then were stuck in out processing. They didn't even know what they are going to chapter us out on. And some of the guys actually decided they were going to refuse all the vaccines uh, just to give the Army something to, to kick them out for, which I, I, don't, I don't blame them. Um, I, I wanted to get out of there too, but that was, I don't know, it was it was important to me that I, I wasn't refusing all of them. This was the one I had a problem with. Again, I can go into reasons specifically with that one um, if you want me to. So anyway, I get shipped back. Uh, they call it refrad because I was National Guard. They said, hey, you go back to your unit back in your state. All right, I can do that. So ship me back. Did a couple of more drills with the uh, main RSP, and then word came down that the federal government was not going to allow people 
who didn't have that shot to, uh, to drill under federal orders or, or to do anything under federal orders. The state can do whatever they want with them, which if you didn't know, the National Guard is a kind of a joint run thing. It's, it's done by state, but it's paid for mostly by the federal government. Um, well, I don't know about the, I, I'm, I'm finding out a lot more about how the, the kind of the back end of that works, but the federal government is very involved. We'll just say that much. Um, there are states, I know Texas is one, Florida made news recently by becoming one. There are states that have a state guard and that's a military force run by the state for the state. Federal government has no say over that whatsoever. Um, which is, I know, kind of the reputation that the National Guard has, and it's, it's more federal than you'd think it is, just by, you know, the, the pop culture reputation of it. So. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so anyway, I got told, oh, I couldn't drill for eight, no, seven months, and then they got back to me like a week before the next drill and said, hey, would you like to come to drill? And I said, you know, you guys, you guys didn't really give me a whole lot of time. I'll, uh, I'm going to have to sit this one out because I got prior commitments. I got stuff going on. Uh, so since it's optional, um, and it was, I asked my, uh, the sergeant there, is, is this optional? Because if it is, I really, I really have other stuff I got to be doing. I mean, for example, I'm, I'm sitting here by the fire this morning, but the rest of the day I got people coming over to help us move, and uh, that's and I'm trying to start a business, and there's just a whole lot of stuff I got going on. And the, there was something specific that weekend I can't remember what right now. Anyway, um, the that conversation about me coming back after seven, eight, seven months of not hearing a thing from the guard regarding my situation. Um, that all happened because there was a change of power in, in Washington and uh, one side got it pushed through over the other side and said, hey, we're not doing that vaccine requirement thing anymore. And, and the guard, of course, contacts me and said, hey, come on back. So, meanwhile, and, and I'm, I'm, aware that the way the rules were set up was once you sign up you have two years to get MOS qualified. Your MOS, your military occupational specialist, that's your job. All right. You have two years to be MOS qualified, you go through basic, you go through your MOS school, and you go to your, your unit. Well, I said this was about two years ago and basic training is what seven seven eight weeks something like that it's two months we'll just ballpark it's two months I don't have enough time left to be to meet that requirement and I probably should have seen this coming because I'm thinking you know what I'm I in fact I my my sergeant I was talking to that I initially talked to for all my recruiting stuff said, you know, he, he talked to me, said, you know, hey, we, we'd love to have you back. We can get you, you know, get you in on a new contract, you know, come on in. And I said, wait, I don't have to sign a new contract? No, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just not interested in that. Uh, and this is, this has just been too much of me getting jerked around. Um having to put stuff on my life in my life on hold and no no I'm, I'm not interested in go signing a new contract even if it's a one-year extension I'm, no no so what they did was they went and uh, they got the RSP folks got an exception to policy that got the army's permission to say hey we'll give you three years now Funny thing about that is I only signed a three-year contract, all right? So, I'm going to go back to basic training, 
go to MOS school, report into my unit, get issued my gear, and almost immediately have to schedule an appointment, at least, with the retention NCO to talk about whether or not I'm going to re-enlist. And I'll tell you right now, I'm this whole experience has uh, really reinforced to me the idea that I want more autonomy and control over my life because uh, if I don't work for these characters they can't jerk me around like they just did among other things there's other concerns too but that's the big one and yeah uh, okay so the other thing too is I've I've been aware throughout the process that yeah you have your contract but you can especially before you've actually like entered at, well in, in the old sense that I was in the Marine Corps it would have been active duty but you know before you actually graduated basic training you can pretty much quit at any time in fact uh, Marine Corps recruit training there you know the Marine Corps boot camp we had a guy just one day one one morning on the obstacle course just decided he'd had enough he was getting yelled at to, to climb up the rope and uh, just stopped kind of looked down dropped like you know let go of the rope dropped down and uh, just walked right up to the uh, the uh, the drill instructor which Marine Corps, the drill instructors, Army's drill sergeants, um, walked right up to the drill instructor and said a few words. Uh, basically, F you, drill instructor, F you. <laughs> and, and they just, you know, wasn't, wasn't angry about it. He was just done. And they walked him off, and I don't know, he went through whatever their, the out processing was for that. And we never saw him again. He was gone. So yeah, you can you can basically and right now I could I could just say, you know what, I am done with you people. You guys have treated me you know treated me like this and I'm just I'm just done and they'd write down refuse to ship and then they would uh, basically give me a bad uh, re enlistment code. So when I, I left the Marine Corps a re enlistment code is kind of the the military's way of saying how much do we want this guy back so for example I left the Marine Corps all the way back in 2007 they gave me a one alpha which is like, yeah we'd love to have this guy back um, now I don't know what it is but basically they'd give me a re-enlistment code that said no we, we, we'd really have to think about it before we let this guy back in and where I am right now in my life I'd, I'm not trying again. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm coming up on 40. This, that was one of the things. This was, if I was ever going to do this again, this was my, uh, kind of my last shot. So, so that's where I am right now. Um, the thing with just basically giving them the middle finger is there's something about that that just doesn't sit well with me. And I know, like, that would that would end my legal requirements and maybe it's just a some misguided sense of morality that I said I'd commit for four for no for uh, for three years but I don't know there's just something that doesn't sit well with me about doing that it just feels like quitting and I know that it's meant and it's phrased deliberately by the military to feel like quitting and I get that, but at the same time, it does. That bothers me. I don't know. I don't know what I want to do with that. Anyway, um, to to add insult to injury, and it's just I saw this and it just oh my word, just made me chuckle. Made me. You had to laugh because otherwise you'd cry. Uh, one of the reasons I started in on this journey was I wanted to transition away from my existing job, which I have since quit, and I'm, I'm working to 
get set up starting a business making knives and you will hear more about that I'll have to put that on hold but the other reason is I, I wanted to to have some some income on the side little little side hustle income and I wanted to get um, trained in other things and one of them was was EMS I, I, I thought you know what that's a great way I love helping people EMS is a great way to go help people and <laughs> Uh, so along with the federal vaccine requirement, there was a lot of state vaccine requirements. And one of them was for medical personnel. And then another one, uh, another one, and I don't know if that, that one's still in existence or not. The other one, though, was for students. And, and not just state, uh, some of that was individual schools. So anyway, I, I saw this thing where... Uh, main state community colleges were offering free now it's just a basic but the EMTB EMT basic they were offering uh, free tuition just just come in come show up you probably have to pay for books but we'll teach you we'll train you no cost to you but I look and in the fine print yeah there's this COVID requirement so I write it off just the other day I'm looking they dropped the COVID vaccine requirement. I said, you, you, mm, I could take advantage of that. Except the Army wants to ship me off to go back to basic training. Uh, it's just, it's, it's like living in some depressing comedy show. I don't know. But anyway, I know some of y'all, uh, I know I put a video out there saying, here's what's going on, and I also know that when I go, I'm going to need to shut the channel down, and I uh, figured you guys would uh, appreciate an explanation of why, you know, sometime in the not-too-distant future, the channel just goes dark for a little while. That'll be why. But, uh, obviously, not going to tell you when exactly that is. Actually, I don't even know when that is um, yet. I don't have a, a ship date, and there's more sad saga to be told with that but i'll save that for another time or probably probably won't even put it on video but anyway that's where i'm at that's where um the channel is that's why the channel is gonna take a break for a little while coming up soon but i got more stuff before that uh, so i'm gonna get up get off my butt i've got lots to do today till next time Get out there, do cool stuff, and uh, y'all take care of each other, all right? Ooh.